protests are popping up around the world against something called 15-minute cities. Now, we've covered the 15-minute cities here on the show, and we warned you about them. And now the warnings are starting to catch on and more and more people are becoming aware of what these governments are doing around these 15 minute cities. I think it's, I like to think about it this way. If the World Economic Forum, what is a 15 minute city? If the World Economic Forum could lay out its perfect design for humanity, it would look like this. You would never leave your house. You would get rid of your car. You would ride your bike everywhere. You would walk to everything you needed within a 15-minute radius of your home, right? The, the pharmacy, the grocery store, grandma, everything. The school, everything would be within 15 minutes of your home. A quick bike ride, a 15-minute walk. Well, earlier this month, thousands of protesters hit the streets of England to express their hostility towards this concept of the 15-minute city. And if you think this is something out of a, a fantasy world, it's not. It's actually already been rolled out in a number of cities across the around the world. In Barcelona, in Melbourne, Australia, parts of Melbourne, um, Paris, and Milan. So this is already a reality. And they're continuing to push this out in more and more World Economic Forum controlled countries and protests in England over the past few days capturing this sentiment. Here's Lawrence Fox, who was one of the people interviewed during these protests. Uh, he's the leader of the Reclaim Party in England. So I don't know where you come down politically on this guy and what your thoughts are on him. But listen to what he says about the protests specifically um, at, um, in Oxford. Listen. So why have you come in? I've come here because I object to being told where I can and can't move in society. I think it's really unhealthy. I think that what's happened is post-pandemic, um, the powers that be in the government have got this desire to control our movement, our speech, everything. And I think it's really dangerous that people, there's a grandmother who's picked her kid up from school and she can't, and it's, she's got to go 12 miles around the ring road to pick up a grandchild. It's, you know, it's more pollution, it's not less. What the county council would say is this is a traffic calming measure. Yeah. That's all they're interested in, is trying to reduce congestion in the centre of this medieval city. But why would a council get to tell a person, A, this is, city is mostly uh, ridden by bicyclists, I spent 10 years working here, and B, why does a council have a right to tell someone where they can and can't travel? They should, it shouldn't work that way. We should be making a freer world for everybody every single day, where you're freer to move, you're freer to speak, and you're freer to you're free to choose what you do with your life. Isn't I mean, isn't the way government works that you elect representatives and they make decisions about but this the is rules? Popular. This the, is not a popular. Look at that. Does that look like the, count, the council of the Ninety percent of the people in Oxford oppose they, it. They oppose this in the same way as they oppose to the Khan's ULA scheme in London. They oppose this stuff. No. But it, and then it goes on from there. Well, the mainstream media is. Well, shouldn't that, I just want to build on that point? Like. Shouldn't market forces take control of that? Like if, if it's getting too crowded in a city, then either people can bike or pe people can find a way around it, or there should be some kind of innovation to take, you know, like tunneling or what have you. Um, you yeah, know, there subway. are private market forces that are at work to solve this. And so for the government to say, nope, you can't, right. we need to solve it. And then we're going to keep you in these small in, in these well, small regions well, like the Hunger Games. Something that Philip kind of brought up earlier in a previous segment is, you know, whenever government forces you into certain things, it never really works out, does it? When has, when government forces you into something, a way of living, a way of life, projects or otherwise, when has it actually ever worked out? The answer is never. Can anyone think of a, 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 an example where the government forced you to do something and it worked out? Lockdowns, that was fun. Mm -hmm. I made a lot of banana bread. Keep going. I, um, I would say, I'd like to, I don't think that worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, someone, it, no. I like this guy in the chat. Someone said, who said that in the chat? Uh, odd, odd job, Bob. I like this title says, uh, uh, no, that wasn't who Edmonton can't be a 15 minute city in the winter. That's a good point. Uh, violent world said, I want five minute cities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want two minute cities where literally everything is in my house already. You had that. I, I mean, we had that. It, <laughs> and again, you know, market forces are kind of taking over the things that people liked from lockdown. They are trying to keep and the things they didn't like, they are not trying to live that way. And so, I mean, that was sarcasm. I don't want to go back into lockdown. Yeah. Uh, and so, well, 
Yeah, go ahead, please. Well, I was going to say, the mainstream media is painting these protests of these 15-minute cities as a conspiracy theory. They're saying, like, the, the you know, people that showed up at these things are protesters. These guys are conspiracy theorists because they're getting the story wrong here. 15-minute cities, how a plan to make your life more convenient became a full-blown conspiracy. So if you're against this, then apparently you're a conspiracy theorist. They just throw the baby out with the bathwater. As journalist Robert Ridge, though, points out in a piece in RT, some of these points are getting a little conflated, and that's how they're able to label people conspiracy theorists. So I think that this is an important point to make. So, you know, people who are watching Redacted and others who are arguing these points don't fall into these, into these traps where people can paint you as a conspiracy theorist. So let's kind of break this down, what Robert Ridge says. I think it's a really important point. Oxford, where the city we just saw, their 15-minute city plans themselves do not actually include traffic restrictions or fines, instead focusing on making the scheme workable by ensuring that residents have access to everything they need. This includes boosting local retail shops, okay, so put a pin in that for a moment, Improving delivery services, okay, put a pin in that for a moment, uh, and other equally benevolent measures, Robert says, with no encroachment on personal freedoms, Robert writes. Given this, the detractors of the 15-minute city have been dubbed conspiracy theorists, okay, but his next part is important. He said, however, Oxfordshire City Council also has a separate plan a set of traffic reducing measures, totally separate from this other one, that will go into trial mode next year. And under this plan, residents will not be allowed to drive on some city streets for most of the day unless they have a 100-day permit. They are encouraged to use instead the ring road or public transport. So don't take the car unless you have unless you know if you have this 100-day permit. Traffic cameras will monitor your compliance and fines will be imposed if you break this. So there's, these are two separate things, right? And so it's very easy then for the mainstream media to kind of label these people as conspiracy theorists because they might be getting a portion of the story wrong. It's two different council measures that mm -hmm. are being blended as one. So we just need to be careful about that. But the point is well taken, and this is exactly what the World Economic Forum has laid out. Two different plans in England are being talked about jointly so be careful. But here's how the BBC explains what a 15-minute city is. Then I'm going to show you what the World Economic Forum says. So that's why it's not fair to call people like us conspiracy, conspiracy theorists. Watch this BBC explainer. The 15-minute city is a really simple concept in many ways. It's really just saying that every urban citizen should be able to meet their basic needs within a 15-minute walk or cycle ride from their house. The concept of the 15-minute city was proposed by French Colombian scientist Carlos Moreno, and aspects of it are starting to be adopted in cities like Paris, Barcelona, and Bogota. And Milan. And of course, here's the World Economic Forum, how they describe it in their own words on their own website. This is the World Economic Forum's website now, so let's just scroll this. The surprising stickiness of the 15-minute city. Um, and it breaks this how, down, how this is going to be so sticky. You're going to absolutely love the surprising stickiness of the 15-minute city. See all these happy people with their bikes? So, you know, and it describes that urbanism trends come and go, but the 15-minute city framing of walkable mixed-use urban development is a lot more than just a fad. The historical roots go back with a long time. We'll be living with for a long time to come, this sort of 15-minute. As climate change and global conflicts shocks causes stress and faster intervals and increasing severity, the 15-minute city will become even more critical. So, of course, that's what they're pinning this on. It's climate change. Yes. It's all about climate I didn't see change. any happy pictures of boomers or Gen Xs in that picture. It was all millennials. Yeah, it's all, you know, it's all young kids. Oh, you don't get to live there. Yeah, if you, yeah oh. you're not. You're, you're kicked you're out. out. I'm in like pasture. a 40-minute city down the street. You, you have to <laughs> You have to go city. live on a farm upstate. Mm -hmm. That's where you get to go. <laughs> yeah. so they're putting you in a ho senior home. With my goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> they're putting you in a Governor Cuomo senior home. You know, there's an episode of Sex in the City where Miranda doesn't want to date this guy because he's never left Manhattan in over a decade. <laughs> Because she's like, he never gets out of here? No, that's unnormal. Like, it's undesirable in a mate. Someone who won't leave the city. <laughs> won't leave it's the like, city, yeah. 
it's seriously like you're turning every city into the Truman Show. I mean, that's like you, you try to go beyond. They're going to like put up walls in each city now. and Yeah, that's exactly well, what Well, I it think is. that's what the fear is, is that they're like, you have everything you need right here. You can't leave here without some kind of carbon emissions permit. Um, and that they construct walls around it because they've told us that this is the way to save the planet. And your responsibility is to stay within your Pavlovian circle. Um, and so I think, yeah, the 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 concern here is about civil liberties, not about whether or not we want to. Because, again, capitalism should take care or just I know people don't like that word or, you know, normal market forces should take care of that. If people are concentrated in one area, then you know, anybody who wants to make some money should go there and open a shoe store. That's sort of how this has worked before. And it's worked out just fine in the past. Um, you know, I, I get I it. Like Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I feel like they I feel like they tipped their hand, though, when you were looking at that Oxfordshire thing, because they had the, uh, you know, like you can't drive on certain cities without the 100 day permit. I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say that permit is probably not free. And so mm -hmm. I, like they could they could probably give you little passes for your your little 15 minute like coordinates or, your, you know, and then, yeah. and then like you need like a pass to purchase things outside of that. And of course, that pass is probably not going to be free. So it's, right. just, it's sort of like the not just limiting everybody's movement because they would never do that. You're not gonna, you're not going to get Buy a an billionaire living in downtown Manhattan. Exactly, you're not going to get a billionaire living downtown Manhattan that's going to be happy with um, just like sitting in their taking the West city. Side Highway, go, like not going exactly. through town. Yeah, yeah. No, unless you have a helicopter, this doesn't affect you, right? So you got to have a helicopter, some kind of flying flying vehicle. Uh, Sheldon, you know or, Sh sorry, Sheridan Forbes in our chat says, uh, redacted, you can hear Toronto City Council talk about it in 2019. It's public record. So Toronto City Council considering this as well. I didn't know that about Toronto. Go ahead, David. I was going to say, did you ever see the movie Out of Time? I think it's called with Justin Timberlake, where they had the time on their arms no. And like the rich people who had all the time could travel freely through all the cities. There was like no stopping them. But like the people that didn't have much time were stuck to these areas where they could they had to go get their drugs. They had to get like they were all approved places they could go. It just kind of it's wow. like very uh, Orwellian. But yeah, there, there's a people lot of science fictiony stuff that sounded like science fiction three, four years ago. Right. They're like, what, can mm -hmm. you believe that? And then in the past, like in the past three, four years, we've seen like most of it come to pass. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, now we just call it Tuesday. <laughs> right. <laughs> From artificial intelligence to ex machina to you name it. Like, it's like all I happening. never thought I would in my life go out for a run and have a, a policeman tell me go back home. Go and back that's home happened because of the pandemic. To me because of the pandemic on Easter weekend. Yeah. Um, you can't be running outside here. Get back to your house. Like what? Yeah catch me so on the surface <laughs> on the surface they pitch <laughs> this idea as a utopia right you can eat outside with your friends on the street you know have food outside no cars will be coming by on these little cafes like in new york city you know, they were shutting down times square now you can just walk it right and uh, you can walk to your local grocery store kids can go to school on foot right no need to deal with two hour commutes it all sounds great and they want you to think of it that way but it's actually part of a larger great reset being rolled out by klaus schwab and the world economic forum them, yeah, you'll, you know, you will rent the place that you live in so that you won't own anything. You'll be restricted by the movements of your government. The government will tell you in approving you, whether, whether it's a, through a vaccine passport or some sort of other digital pass, they'll control your movements and we're going to provide government subsidies. And if you don't, we are going to take your government subsidies away. You will not receive these government subsidies. You're already seeing this in action in Brazil, the threats of getting the vaccine or you will not receive government subsidies under um, uh, Lula da Silva announced two weeks ago. So let's say you're, and this is one of the pieces I want to point out because these are some of the distractions and some of the protests here. Like it, let's say you live in zone one, right? And you are restricted to zone one on certain days. Like you can't go to zone two or zone three. It's like the Hunger Games. And if you do, you'll be fined as a result, or it'll come out of your allotment that you're allowed to travel no, freely. No, you get clubbed by the peacekeepers. Right. That's or what happens to, in the Hunger Games. <laughs> the reaping. You'll be a part of the reaping. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can't go to zone five today, but what if grandma lives in zone five and she's fallen and she needs a special help from you, know, you over the next few weeks? Well, don't worry. We've already established that grandma's put out to pasture. Yeah, I guess we're only her productive in. working people inside the 15 minute cities because it's a, uh, I'm going to bring up another science fiction like, movie. It's like Gattaca. 
like you, you're no longer a productive worker. You're out of here. Right. We only or, want or worse like Auschwitz, you know, um, yes. Yeah, someone in the chat talked about how these, this is like the Jewish ghettos. Like yeah. you all go in here for, this is what, yeah. This like you're frail. Oh, you've got children. You're going to the left because we know where that leads to the right. You're, you've got a few working weeks left in you. We'll send you to the right. Um, as Dr. Jordan Peterson points out, gym. as Dr. Jordan Peterson points out on Twitter, here he says, the idea that neighborhoods should be walkable is lovely. The idea that idiot tyrannical bureaucrats can decide by fiat where you're allowed to drive is perhaps the worst imaginable perversion of that idea. And make no mistake, it's part of a well-documented plan. Yes, a well-documented plan from the World, World um, Economic Forum. It's all laid out by them. So that's why they were encouraged by these protests in England. Keep it up. If you've got protests in your neck of the woods, let us know about it here, and we will share it here either in the newsletter on Redacted or right here on the show. So thank you guys so much for, um, for bringing that to our attention and making sure that you're a part of this uh, anti-15-minute city BS. Go ahead, Philip. And what, one of the things like that, that uh, I initially loved about Portland, and it's, it's a bit different now, but when I first moved here in like 2004, was that throughout the city and, and the entire metro area, there are these tiny little, almost like small town downtowns where you'd get like a block or two of just little shops, little things like that. You'd have like a bar, a couple restaurants and stuff like that. And you could, if, if you were in one of these neighborhoods, you could walk to these little downtowns and every every like little area had one. And it was really nice. It's really convenient to have everything right there. So like definitely there is an aspect of this where it's it's a benefit. It's a benefit. It's beautiful to have that, but it's when it's when they force you into it. Right. That becomes the problem. Yeah. Or, or you, you can't know, leave like it. Natalie was saying. Yeah, or you can't exactly, leave yeah. it, right? You're not allowed to have a car. You can't you can't go out to the country. You can't leave to go visit grandma. You can't go see, you know, or you're restricted based on your certain carbon footprint allotment number based on, you know, what days you can travel, based on your 100-day permit, et cetera. Right. And, I mean, the government, you know, can create these naturally beautiful, you know, sort of microcosms of neighborhoods that you talked about through ta tax incentives um, to, you know, rebuild certain neighborhoods. But again, it that's entrepreneurs who build those things up. Anything that's, and this is the reason that the government gave up on government housing, because they suck at it. Because it's ugly, it's terrible, they can't manage it. Um, you know, that's why we have this the name the projects as an undesirable place to live. No one wants to live where government has set up housing. And you just reminded me of something I told you earlier to put a pin in something and I forgot to pull a pin back out again, um, which is that they're going to bolster retail, right? The idea is, oh, so we're going to do all this, but we're going to really make sure that your retail providers have everything you need. Oh, haven't we heard that before? Right. So you're going to live in this 15 minute city. You're not going to drive anywhere, but the, your government is going to take care of you. It's going to make sure that your local grocery stores are fully stocked. We're going to make sure that all of these things are provided for you, that your schools are taken care of, that your water sources are great, like all of these things. So really, you're going to put the government faith that we're going to make our living environment perfect because the government has a great track record of that right now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So you're really putting your faith in that. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the Rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.